Hey, it's Chris Allingham with the Virtual Weber Gas Grill. Today I'm going to replace the propane regulator on my 2002 Weber Summit 450 gas grill. This grill is 20 years old. I've got great service out of it. Um, it's a wonderful grill, one of the best grills that Weber ever built. But I am having a problem lately with the propane regulator. It seems like there are times when, especially after it sits for an amount of time, it doesn't put out enough gas to get the grill hot, even though I've got a full tank of propane and I know that my propane tank is working okay. So I've narrowed it down to the regulator. I also went in, by the way, and I checked the valves and I checked the burners, the burner tubes, they were all clean. They weren't clogged up with cobwebs or anything like that, any debris. So I finally narrowed it down to the propane regulator. And in fact, what I was doing to make the grill work is I'd take a wooden spoon and just beat the heck out of the regulator and I guess it would unstick whatever gets stuck in there and it would seem to work for that cooking session and then I come back you know later and the next time I try to do the same thing so I'm gonna replace it I've got a brand new regulator from Weber uh, for my grill in 2022 the part number is 65941 um, you know, Weber likes to change part numbers all the time, so don't rely on this part number for this particular grill. Give Weber a call, 1-800-446-1071. That number again, 1-800-446-1071. Give them the model of your grill, and they'll tell you what the right part is that you need, and either they can sell it to you over the phone, or uh, you can go to the store and buy it if you can find it, or go to some third-party website and buy it. The important thing to note is that these regulators are not one size fits all. They can be different from grill to grill, from model to model. And oftentimes it really just has to do with the length of the, the hose that's on the regulator and whether it's long enough for your particular application. So this is the regulator that they sent me. Um, it consists of the hose, the connector that connects to the, the connector that connects to the grill, and then the end that connects to the propane tank, and this is the regulator itself. This is the part that I was beating on. Um, it has the newer connection on it that just screws on to all modern propane tanks. Not very long for my grill. You can see it's only maybe two feet long or a little longer than that in total. The only tool I need to install it is going to be this crescent wrench. Um, this installation doesn't require any pipe dope or any tape at all. Um, the connection here is this smooth flat surface inside that mates up with another smooth flat surface uh, at the grill and it just threads on and by compression it seals and it doesn't need any kind of pipe dope so that makes it a really super simple installation. Weber also included a set of instructions in the box with the regulator but as I look at it it becomes really clear that these instructions are not for my specific grill, therefore one of the Genesis grills, but that's okay. The gist of what they're saying here is to basically unscrew the hose fitting from the, uh, the inlet where the gas connects and screw on the new one until it's tight and use a wrench to do it and don't over tighten. So that's exactly what I will do. So just to give you some reference, here's the, the right side of the grill and underneath the work table. This is where the propane tank connects and hangs. Here you can see the connection that I'm working on. This is the regulator hose right here. And if I zoom in even closer, here's the, here's the gas line coming in from the hose. It connects right here. This is the, the nut that I'll be loosening. And it goes into this block right here that goes inside the grill to the manifold. And out here is a quick disconnect that you can use for, I imagine it was an option for a uh, side burner that would have been mounted up above in this area up here. So all I need to do is uh, just loosen this nut to get this hose off and we'll give that a shot right now. That was on there pretty tight. It's held in place just by a metal strap, a steel strap, and then this fitting uh, is bolted on to the strap on both sides. 
and there's a flexible uh, metal tube on the back side that carries the gas to the manifold. So I had to sort of stabilize this because it would want to bend a little bit as I torqued on this nut, but I was able to stabilize it by hand and break the connection. And now there we go. So here we've got it off of the grill. And you can see here, this is very smooth surface right here. Um, anytime you see this kind of a smooth beveled edge on a gas grill connection and you look inside the hose and you see the same thing, a smooth flat surface in the back, those are surfaces that mate together without the need for any kind of pipe dope at all. So when you see when you see this kind of a flat surface and you see this flat surface, you know you don't need any pipe dope. You're just going to screw these on uh, and get them good and tight without over tightening and you're kind of done with this job. Let me get the hose. So this is just a matter of threading this on. It goes on very easily. It doesn't need any kind of lubricant at all. That's finger tight. Now let me just give this a little, little twist here. I'm going to, again, sort of stabilize the fitting here. I'm trying to get my hands out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Just, that's tight enough right there. So there we go. There's our new connection. If I back out the camera, you can see here's my new regulator connected by the new hose to the new fitting that connects to the old gas intake on my Weber Summit 450. So here's the new regulator attached to the propane tank and here's the old regulator. You can see in a side-by-side -side view this old one looks a lot more substantial than the new one. The new one is kind of a stamped material. This old one I don't know, it looks like it's like cast material. I don't know. It does seem a lot sturdier. We'll see whether this new one can last 20 years or not. I, I kind of doubt it, but we'll have to see. Okay, before we do a fire up on the grill, we're gonna do a leak test. Make sure we don't have any gas leak at this new connection. So I've opened up the propane tank valve. I got a glass of water with some dish soap in it. I'm just gonna apply it around the connection and see if I see any bubbles forming. And if I do, I know that I've got a leak. And it's kind of hard to see on the back side, so I'm not completely sure. But I don't see any on the top, front, or bottom. So I'm gonna call that good to go. I think I got a good solid connection without a leak. So following the recommended lighting instructions from Weber, I have turned on the gas at the propane tank and left that valve open for a minute before I do anything here at the grill. Once that minute has passed and the gas line into the grill is fully charged with uh, propane, I'm going to start on my, I always start on my right side of the grill. This is for a four burner grill. There's an igniter on burners one and three, and there's a crossover tube in the back. So when you light this burner, uh, then you open up this valve and the crossover tube lights this burner. So starting right here, I'm gonna turn this to the light position. I'm gonna give it a count of a few seconds to get plenty of gas in that burner tube and hit my lighter, my igniter twice. There we go, we got a lit tube. I can see my crossover tube is lit. I'm gonna turn this burner number four to high and it's also now lit. So going back to the number one side, turn on number one burner, give it a couple of counts. One, two, three, plenty of gas in that tube. One click, it's lit. I see the crossover burner is lit. Turn this to high. And now my burner number two is lit. So when I take a peek through the sides here, I see good strong flame on burners one, burners two, burners three, and burner number four. I think I've solved it for now. I'm pretty happy with the result. I see there's a little orange flame down there. I think I've got some debris that's burning on the end of that burner from the last time I cooked. Other than that though, I see a lot of blue flame. So that wraps up this video on how to replace the propane gas regulator on a Weber Summit 450 gas grill. Really happy with the results. It's a really uh, easy thing to do. And I think uh, if you wanna undertake a task like this, it's got a, a difficulty level of about, uh, on a scale of one to 10 is like a two. It's really easy. So something very approachable. Hey, by the way, um, this is one of my favorite 
t-shirts that we have for the Richard Weber bulletin board. My favorite phrase about Weber girls, buy the best and only cry once. So if you want one of these t-shirts, you'll find them out at represent.com. I'll put a link uh, on the screen as well as in the description of this video and you can go check them out. I think they sell for about $22. Well, that's it for now, folks. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you very much. Please like and subscribe to my videos and uh, hit that notification bell so you get a notification when I put out new videos. Till next time, happy grilling, happy summer. We look forward to seeing you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.